Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back, your lovely faces, to part six of the deep dive from the documents that Andy has sent to us. Again, Andy, thank you ever so much for letting us look at these documents because you have put so much amazing work into these. And I do want to let people know that these have been sent to numerous media outlets and they've also been sent to Johnny Depp's legal team. So we're going to straight back into it, guys, because yesterday, as you remember, we went over the uh, the light and the photos and that the third photo was the first taken and that the third photo wasn't actually sent in the courts. It was just sent to the media. And this is what we kind of carry on with, with the whiskey. There remains the matter as to whether a drink had been taken from the smaller glass of whiskey that had been moved between the photos. By marking equivalent levels on the whiskey glass of photos 3 and 2, and then superimposing one of the markings on the other, there is shown to be no discernible change in the level of whiskey between the photos. As you can see, blue, red, literally the same. Clearly no drink had been taken from the glass, despite it having been moved to a different position on the table. The only plausible reason to move a glass between photos without drinking from it would be to better position that glass for the next photo. Further anomaly of the placement of the items on the glass table was that the stale glass of whiskey, the travel mug and the cigarette would all have been to Mr. Depp's left as he sat in the chair. Yet Mr. Depp is right-handed as he testified in cross-examination on day three of the UK trial. 51M, right ring finger injury, reads the words, right-hand dominance, you are right-handed? Yes. The anomaly is further compounded by the fact that the handle of the travel mug is turned fully to the left, as viewed from the chair. So we have that by there. Now we have the unravelling testimony of the painting incident. Staging the scene. The three photographs given into evidence by A.H. provide a very clear account of her staging of the scene, for which she was so heavily relied to bolster her allegations of this inflicted on her by Johnny Depp on the 22nd of March 2013. Photo of the missing box has irrefutably been proven to have been the first photo taken of the three, and that it was some, you know, taken some minutes before the other photos. The text messages showing lines of powder in a tampon applicator that Whitney testified she had sent Johnny Depp has been proven to have been sent to AH, and thereby totally discrediting her claim, as was supported by a text to Sis, that she had given Mr. Depp the applicator seen on the glass table. Story of the three photographs is hence very straightforward. First, second, third, with her knee. So, A.H. cut four lines of powder on the table directly in front of where she was sitting, seen by her bent knee. She then placed her sisters, who lived at the property, applicated near to the powder, along with Johnny's credit card and a newly poured chill glass of whiskey, as is evident from the slightly frosty surface of the glass. Yes, yes, yes. At the opposite side of the table, she hung Johnny's leather jacket on the back of the chair, and on the table in front, she placed a newspaper with Johnny's beanie on top, and then placed his mobile phone, an ashtray, a packet of tobacco, and an unlit rolled cigarette nearby, which is what we've seen. So, staging the scene, done. To the left of the newspaper, she placed Mr. Depp's cigarette lighter. Directly in front of the newspaper, she placed what appears to be a warm, stale glass of whiskey, possibly left over from the night before, and in front of the whiskey, she placed Johnny Depp's branded travel mug, ensuring that the Infinitium Nile logo was almost totally in shot. Middle of the table, she placed Mr. Depp's toiletry bag, and on top she placed a CD from Keith Richards with the label facing towards the camera. She then took her first photograph of the stage scene. However, at some point later, she decided to further embellish the scene by retrieving a box with a very identifying inscription property of JD, and placing it next to the credit card by the powder. In doing so, she slightly pushed forward and rotated the card with the side of the box. She then moved the chill glass of whiskey in order not to obscure the objects behind, and then she moved the Keith Richards CD forward along the toiletry bag so that all desired items would fit into a landscape shot. She then took her next photograph. To make the scene a little more credible, she moved the ashtray and placed the still unlit cigarette inside before taking her third photo. Alternatively, given her testimony, the story would be that Mr. Depp did himself four lines of powder, poured himself a second glass of whiskey, and rolled himself a cigarette, only to then leave the kitchen without drinking from either glass of whiskey, 
without lighting his cigarette and without having snorted any powder, simply leaving them to spread or scatter. Minutes later, after she took the first photo, Johnny Depp briefly returned to the table to place his retrieved box near the line of powder to move his glass aside without taking a sip from it and to move the CD to the front of his toiletry bag. He then again left without lighting his previously rolled cigarette, without having sipped from either glass of whiskey, and still without having snorted any of the powder he had prepared earlier. A.H. then took a second photo, after which Johnny returned just to move his ashtray and place his still unlit cigarette inside. He then again left without having sipped from either glass of whiskey, without having snorted any of the powder, and without having lit his cigarette, allowing her to take a third photo. Mr. Depp testified in court on day two that he remembered drinking whiskey that day, but did not believe that he had snorted powder. Whiskey in the morning, yes, it was quite a nasty moment, argument. And do you remember doing this? I do not remember doing that, no. It is hence likely that uh, after having staged and photographed the drug scene, then tidied it all away before Mr. Depp had gotten out of bed. Now, Mr. Depp was still in bed. It is self-evident from AH's three photos that Johnny Depp was not and had not been in the kitchen before or during the period she took the three photos. In their closing statement, NGN provided a timeline for the events of that day and included the exchange of text messages between various parties. Not all text messages and evidence may necessarily have been included in their timeline and this must be considered when reading this section. So, at 12.03 on that day, Nathan Holmes, Johnny Depp's assistant, texted A.H. to let her know that he was on his way. On my way to get him. 34 minutes later, at 12.37, she texts back saying, I'm trying to wake him now. So, at 12.37, he was still sleeping. An hour later, at 1.37, according to metadata, A.H. took photo F894263, showing the four lines of powder and other paraphernalia. So, she's saying that this is when it, you know, I took this an hour, exactly one hour after trying to wake him. Which, again, that uh, that is a little bit of the old, hmm, okay, very interesting. Exactly one hour out, you send a text message to his assistant saying, yeah, I'm trying to, uh, I'm trying to wake him up now, you know. So, what we're going to look at in a moment, we're going to go by there. Right, so, at 1411, Stephen uh, Deuters, Doubters, you know, I do apologise, Deuters, Mr. Depp's main personal assistant, sent a text to Mr. Depp to tell him that Keith Richards had just arrived and was in the studio and that the shooting could start any minute. There was no response from Mr. Depp. At 14.44, filming started and at some point shortly after, he again texted Johnny to inform him that we just started shooting so you know. Mr. Depp's first use of his mobile phone that day, according to texts shown within the NGN timeline, was in response to Mr. Uh, so Stephen, I'm not going to say his surname, I do apologise. Last text message, he responded, there is nothing I can add to whatever magic is already there. I'm on my way. So that one near is when he sent the text message. So, the time of Mr. Depp's text message is unknown. However, Stephen replied to Johnny's text stating, cool, we're getting it, it's amazing, suggesting that filming was well underway at the time of Mr. Depp's reply. 1508. So we have there, while Whitney was driving to the property, A.H. sent her a text stating that she and Johnny were still fighting and asked that Whitney not come in yet. But that's also a little bit on the old, ooh, really? This is what you want to do? So, let me know before you get here. Johnny is over still and we're fighting, so please don't come in yet. It's kind of nasty but winding down. The various text messages from A.H., Johnny Depp and Stephen suggest that Mr. Depp was finally awoken between 2.44 and around 3 p.m. that day. Well, after the photos were taken of the lines of powder and objects. This would also explain why uh, A.H. text to his sister was sent at 3.08 and not much earlier. 
There were no further text messages from AH to Holmes within NGN's timeline that would give an indication as to what time Johnny had actually been awoken. This is somewhat surprising as Mr. Holmes was on his way to collect Mr. Depp and according to court testimony was waiting for Mr. Depp in his car having arrived at the property. It would be implausible that AH not keep him apprised of the situation. Yeah, I'm just going to let him stay out there. I'm not going to say what's going on. I'm not going to let him know. She told him what was going on. That's obvious. The timeline given by NGN very strongly supports that Mr. Depp was not even awake at the time that AH had staged and photographed the scene. There is, however, more compelling testimony giving evidence that Johnny was still asleep at the time she took the photos. Now, when she testified on day 13 of the UK trial that Johnny was in the kitchen from 12.37 and that he refused to leave, specifically leave the kitchen, she further embellishes a testimony to place Mr. Depp at the dining table, drinking whiskey and doing this. Still, on the 22nd, now can you help us as to what was going on between noon, or more particularly, 12.37, when the text on page this was sent, and about 6 o'clock that evening. Yes, Johnny refused to leave, specifically leave the kitchen, where he had kind of... At breakfast, clearly, and he was doing this, he was drinking whiskey, and he was saying we really needed to work this out. This begs the question as to why uh, Mr. Depp, if he refused to leave the kitchen, did he not appear in any of the photos, which were ultimately taken across several minutes, and did not witness the photos being taken. In her witness statement, 12th of December, on the De uh, 2019, Whitney further embellished the alleged mayhem in the kitchen. I came home and walked into a mess. Johnny was in the kitchen with lines of powder and an almost empty bottle of whiskey in front of him. He was smoking in the kitchen and it was clearly he had been smoking there for some time because there was cigarette butts everywhere. There was broken glass in the kitchen area and furniture was askew, so I knew something had happened. I sat and chatted to him. Now... Whitney places Johnny sat at the dining table in the same kitchen from which he had refused to move. A.H.'s photographs are a pristine dining table simply do not match the vandalised kitchen described by Whitney. There is not even any ash in the ashtray. On day two of the UK trial, Mr. Depp testified that he remembered drinking whiskey that day and did not recall the destruction described by Whitney. I do not recall the destruction that Whitney Heard is describing. I remember the morning, I remember sitting at the glass table, just outside her kitchen, and I was drinking whiskey. Further compelling evidence that uh, Johnny had not yet entered the kitchen at the time the photograph was taken is that the same chair that we are guided to believe was the one that he was sat in when drinking whiskey and smoking heavily remained in all three photos fully tucked under it. The adjacent diagram shows two magnified images from the first and last photos, showing he encircled two left legs of the chair in which we are guided to believe Johnny drank whiskey and smoked cigarettes. So this by here, these are what we got. The chair has not moved. The chair is fully tucked under the table with his front leg up against the table's central support and structure. And the rear leg can be seen in both photos, resting astride one black and one white tile. The chair clearly did not move position throughout the time and that the photos were taken. So, what we're going to do, we're going to leave it by there, guys, because we are now 13 and a half minutes into this. And I just want to say, this is just amazing. So, we are going to continue this tomorrow now with the hopefully the last video. It should be, we do have, though, about, ooh, about 15 more pages. So, I'm going to try and go over that tomorrow. Tomorrow's video may be a little bit longer than the last uh, couple, because obviously we want to get this over with. But if you are new to the channel, please like and subscribe, hit that notification bell for future updates, and I'll see each and every one of you soon.